What is up, everybody? Thank you for clicking on the video. Before we start, I wanted to let you guys know that I have some new merch up on the Burn Down Merch. Uh, it's burndownmerch.com website. This is the new Malibu sticker. Waited a long time to get artwork and fine artwork that I really liked. Um, I had a guy do this. I found him on Instagram. He did a killer job on the artwork. I made it into stickers. It will be available in t-shirts and hoodies. I haven't got around to putting the art on those things yet, but the stickers are live. They are readily available. It's a four by three. And then I also made a new burn down logo with Uncle Gus. And then as usual, we got the forever three by three that most of you are familiar with at this point. So thank you guys for the support. Thank you for watching. Go grab a sticker. Hope you enjoy the video. What is up, everybody? My name is Dane Thompson. Welcome back to another episode of Burn Down. So in this episode, we are still out here, still on the struggle bus. We are getting closer. I can see light at the end of the tunnel. And we got a giant box today. So this should be the patch panels for this portion down here. Um, as you can see, this one is full of filler. The other side, I cleaned it out. I actually left this in here on purpose below this line because I'd like to try to cut it out and weigh this so we can laugh about it because I guarantee this probably weighs more than an entire patch panel. Uh, I bought patch panels from Goodmark so we can open this up together and see how they look, kind of how they fit, and we will go from there. So let's open these things up and then I will show you guys today how to install a patch panel, at least how I install a patch panel. So let's open the box up and see how these things kind of fit, get a plan of attack, and get rolling. All right, this should be left and right, so both sides. And I ordered these directly from Goodmark because OPGI was sold out. Otherwise, I would have just drove down there and got them. Got some bubbly. And that's it. Here we go. One. And two. Oh, look at that. All R&L. They're even marked. Can't screw it up, huh? So here we go. Here's the patch panel. Um, let's kind of look. Get a look-see here. All right. Something like so. So it covers getting welded to that. We got some new sheet steel that looks decent up here. And we'll throw that bad boy in. And then uh, get rid of this. Uh, what I'll do though is I want to measure this. Like I said, I want to cut this out, leaving the filler, just so we can weigh it. And then I'll compare just that bottom portion to this, and we'll see how much more weight just in filler on this one little panel, considering this whole car has been covered with it. So that is that. Let me kind of get measurements. Uh, we'll be silly right now and cut that portion out. I think is what I want to do first. And then the way the sun is, uh, we're just going to start on this side over here. So I have the patch panel again for the other side, but I think what I'll do is I'll just show you guys the one side and then obviously you don't need to see both. I'll instruct you, show you how this one goes. Maybe show you the final product on the other side if I get that far today. So, okay, kind of marked off where I want to make my cut. We'll just go here, down, and then I'm going to leave some of this bottom edge and we'll just cut this um, just so we can check this out and see what that chunk weighs and then once we quit screwing around and figure out what that weighs i'll strip some of this back and then we'll get on to installing the panel all right well we got this off it's my battery box on the inside of my car so this is supposed to be a flange it comes down and meets this panel but they made it out of fiberglass looks like Need these things though. Hmm. I don't know. I might need that. Let me sift through the rest of the gunk that is on here. But good lord. Aha. I dropped all these little guys in there. Thought they were lost for good, but they're not. So, got some cap, probably from the 60s. 
Save those. All right, well, as to be expected, I <laughs> wasn't really planning on taking the whole bottom piece off because if there was a strip of steel, I wanted to connect the bottom piece of the little quarter panel because that's the proper way to do it. Granted, I'm not going to, but in reality, there's a backing panel that's be flat and would come down flat and it meets the bottom edge of that and it's pinch welded together on the bottom on a standard vehicle. Obviously mine doesn't have that so we're not going to fret and we're not going to worry about that because again this is a race car and then the moisture will just leak out of the trunk. We'll have to be gravy right? So let's throw this on a scale versus the entire patch panel and I guarantee this boy's going to weigh something so that tells us just how much crap we've taken off this car. <laughs> Contestant number one, two pounds. So for this whole bad boy. And contestant number two, my little friend. Bam, three pounds. So yeah, so just, just this portion alone is three pounds and that's the full patch panel. So five pounds. All right, we are back over here and I was gonna test fit this panel, show you guys how to put it on and kind of cut it in. Well, as luck would have it, even the panel that they gave me ends before the damage. So when I put the panel up, it's like right here. So I still have stuff to contend with. So technically, yeah, and that whole thing is just pretty, pretty well junk. So, I'll fit it on here. Uh, I'll show you guys how I usually put it in place. I think the other side's better than this side, but I'll just kind of do it, and then I can get it cut in from here to there, and then down. So that's actually pretty straightforward and simple, because I only have a few sides to put in, and then I'll have to end up making some sort of panel, I believe, to, to reshape and attach the edge here this looks like it's attached maybe with fiberglass or something i don't know how that's attached but yeah this is not really a good indica uh, indication of how to do one of these panels typically you'd have some rot and some issues this would still probably kind of be here hopefully um they probably sell this piece because it's a trunk pan and then that attaches to the bottom again this is race car so i'm not even gonna i actually what i'm probably gonna do is just cut this tetanus crap off so when I'm under the car working on stuff, I don't hit it and hurt myself. So I think I'll just take a saw and cut that straight off. And then we're just going to leave it. So this will be open on the inside of the fender to the ground. So that's not the right way to do it. Like if you're doing a rust or whatever. And technically, if you're restoring this car, you just put, you would, I would have cut this quarter out. Anybody would have cut the quarter out. Seeing just the slight inclination of how terrible it was. But... We're just going to scab this piece over it. Maybe, I guess, make a patch panel for the rear. And then I'm hoping the other side, it looks like there's a little more um, meat and potatoes there still to work with. So let me just get this one kind of slammed in place real quick if I can. Then maybe we can cut the other one in and it'll be a little more user friendly. We can show you guys a bit better way, you know, on how to do it. Technically, this thing just needs to look good. You know, it needs to have the wheel oil opening and then the back. And it needs to go fast. That's it. That's all we're looking for. So, let me put this on here and I'll show you guys. Okay, so here are the tools I typically use. Drill motor. I get these little eighth inch drill bits from Harbor Freight. They're double sided, you get a little pack of them. They're fairly inexpensive. And these are Clecos and then some Cleco pliers. So what these do is these go in there and the little jaws expand and then they hold themselves uh, in an eighth inch hole and they come in other sizes and variants and all that stuff the bigger ones usually obviously bigger panels bigger holes oh here's one of those another drill bit so that's what these drill bits look like so anyway got our drill bit loaded got our clecos handy and let me show you how we get this kind of party started all right so what you want to do is you want to take your panel that you're going to cut in typically you don't really want damaged rots okay if it's not there but the piece has to be in the shape that it's going to ultimately kind of end up in. If this thing's wadded up and moved all around, 
when you put this over the top, it's not gonna wanna find its, its home. Um, and what I mean by that is this body line here, you know, then you got this body line, which is butting up against here, and then you got this little edge over here, which this contour kind of rides in right here. So see that? So when I put it in there, you kind of wiggle it around and it kind of finds like that. Like it feels like it's in place. You know, the body line looks good. This looks good. This is kind of where it should be. So tentatively, I think that's, you know, a pretty, pretty good fit when you look at it. So something like that. So what I do in this case is I like to punch a hole with this through both panels and then Clico it in. Um, since I have a flange here, one easy thing to do is to clamp it. So let me go get a clamp and we'll come back that way. I can kind of push this where I think it goes, clamp it down, and then I can use the other hand to hold that and drill. That way it doesn't move around too bad. So let me grab a clamp, we'll clamp this down and uh, get rolling. Shavings are hot. There. Now it won't fall off. Let me come back to this side. Do the same thing. All right. So that is how Clico panel clamps work. Like I said, this is gonna always be lower than this because this is outside of it, right? So I like to make my vertical cuts first, and then if you had to, you can kind of you can kind of fudge it. But when we cut this in, there's gonna be room to move it up, anyways. So I'm not. Again, I'm not much of a stickler. I'm decent. I'm okay with that. And this looks much nicer. But as you can see, this is where our issue is here. Um, but I'm gonna just go ahead and I think cut this whole panel in, which is fairly straightforward. You know, I'll just leave, I think everything this has in it, we'll just cut it right up there. So that's good metal. And then I'll cut into here. I'll kind of try to reshape this to lay against this a little bit flatter. Maybe we can just kind of beat on them together. And then when I cut this in, um, I'm gonna have to make something to fill this section in. Granted, the bumper is here, but that's pretty trashy. We'll at least finish it. And then uh, this, this thing's probably gonna wiggle pretty good. Maybe, I don't know if we can attach it to whatever's underneath there, but we'll see. So let me see how we go. Let me mess with this a little bit, kind of get the fit a little closer, and then we will uh, essentially cut this thing in all right I got rid of some of the low-hanging tetanus uh, that was hanging down all this kind of stuff right here like I said underneath the car so I don't hit myself on it and then I guess there's still some kind of metal in there what we're gonna do is click this back in place I cleaned all the edges around it and we're gonna just put it back in place and I'm just gonna cut this thing in and I think what we will do is I'll just make the vertical cuts first, and then we'll make this cut across the top, and then the thing will basically drop out, and what we'll do is we'll come back and fit it, because we're gonna tuck it up into place so this lines up a little bit better. What I could do is I could just manipulate that edge. I guess we could cut and weld it as we go. But um, let's just do it this way. We'll just make our cuts here and here, and then I'll make the cut across, and then we'll slide it up, tack it, in place and then uh, go from there and then what I like to do next is yeah these clicos hold it in place but obviously when you're cutting you know they're kind of it's kind of in the way I guess you could kind of get around it but anyway what I like to do to make sure nothing's moving is got my welder fired up and then I'll just put tacks along the panel here and then maybe a couple on the edges here and here and then when you're cutting it 
it's not gonna move for sure. And then you just cut through the tacks. So it's kind of kind of a twofold thing. And then they'll hold it right till the very end. So I'm gonna put a few across the top because we're gonna be cutting it so that way it doesn't move until we cut through the last batch. But let me tack it up and then we'll cut it in. All right, now we're kind of back to square one. Uh, this dude is out, but now this should actually fit in place. So let me go get my magnets and then we'll try to set this back so you guys can get a look at it. And then back here, we're just gonna have to figure out what to do. This is, that's all fiberglass, that's terrible. And then the panel only comes to here, but I figure we'll get as much of it in as we can. And then I have an edge that we'll just have to connect somehow, but that's besides the point. Let's get this thing kind of in place, see how we did. All right, so there's a panel just held in by magnets. As you can see, you know, we cut it and it'll fit right back into place. Obviously it's sagging down a little bit. This is gonna meet up better. I need to hold it to make that happen. So let me tack this all in place. I'll show you guys the fit. And then, um, yeah, that action over there, that was kind of unplanned, so. Maybe we'll get a plan of attack, but let me get this in place, kind of. Well, that's where it is gonna live, but the back edge won't be finished. We'll have to probably dream up something for that. Okay, so this thing obviously is a bit more involved than just cutting a panel in. I know everybody's probably wondering, well, what are you gonna do back here, Dane? How are you gonna fix that? Well, I'll be perfectly honest with you. I'm gonna wing it. So what I did is I found a spot that actually had metal clamped them together. I'm gonna throw a little weld bead right here to hold that shape. And then I'm gonna make a panel that's in the shape basically of, of that. And I might even just overlay it and leave this here cause it's so flimsy and crap anyways. And then we'll just weld it on the edge and then it'll just give it added structure. So this can all live behind it. Maybe we'll cut, let me cut this out. This is crap right here anyway. We'll just kind of cut that and get rid of it. But yeah, I'm just gonna make a piece that'll weld to this edge and then to here and then to the edge of this and tie this little structure that we have left <laughs> back into this. That's the easiest fix that I could come up with. And again, we'll put the bumper and stuff on. This will all kind of go away. We'll coat it with rubber. Life is gonna be good. Rubber from burnouts, if you're wondering. All right, this is gonna be our fix, right? We got a poster board. I believe that's pretty much a straight edge. So we put the edge where it meets up with this. Goes underneath to there, found a spot to tack weld it. So you can see, I mean, we're gonna have to uh, fudge this thing a little bit anyway. What I'm gonna do, so let's come to the back side of this, trace this out. Uh, let's see if we can do this on camera. Where am I at? There we're at. Look at that one-handed, ladies and gentlemen. You know it's gonna be a good patch panel. And the dude's doing it one-handed. <laughs> anyway. Uh, there we go. So that's our rough shape. You can kind of see it in there. That's the shape of this corner. So what we'll do is we'll get the straight edge. We'll make this piece out of steel real quick. And we'll get the straight edge lined up, kind of tack weld that in place. And then I'm just gonna make this fit and then weld it around the edge so it basically caps it off. Simple, to the point, hidden by the bumper. Life is good. All right, it's a few minutes later. That is my quick solution. I'll have to get in there a little bit better, but I think that's junk. Anyway, you guys get the idea. It looks a little bit better than what it was. Again, this is hidden by the bumper, so we're still good. So anyway, had this been real metal, <laughs> you would make your vertical cut, tack weld this in, and Bob is your uncle. So the only thing left to do is tack it. And again, if you watch the other video, you know that I go in between the big spaces and then I'll start over again and gives it a chance to cool down. I'll do that and I put my hand on here, my bare hand on the panel. That way, if it's too hot for me to touch, you're putting too much heat into it. So I always try to leave one bare hand, namely this one I usually put a glove on and steady my welder. But that is what it looks like. Uh, here is the back if you're wondering. So I just overlapped this and attached it and then burned it in on the edge. So here is a piece that's not connected. 
So that should just be a flat piece that comes down and pinch welds to this all the way across. Technically not a hard piece to make. If you dug all this out, you could just, you know, get the contour of that and make a flat piece. Call it a day. We're going racing, so we don't care. This is good enough. I think structure-wise too. I mean, the whole quarter wiggles a little bit, but I don't care because we're not gonna have 10 inches of filler to fall off and hurt somebody. We weld it up and grind it. I'll show you guys and we'll wrap this. Kind of a bit of, the, of a pain. Didn't go as planned, but that is metal work in a nutshell. You think you're like, oh, I got this patch panel and then it comes up short and you're like, well, now what? So you saw me wing it. And again, we can do a poll. Would you rather find the Bondo mystery or the welded <laughs> patch mystery had you opened up a car? So leave a comment in the questions. Let me weld this up, I'll grind it down and bring you guys back. And uh, yeah, we'll call it good for the patch panel video that kind of didn't work out. I still have the other side to do though. So maybe we'll get on that one. If it's a little more friendly, we can showcase that one as well. All right, well, there it is. That's all I've got in the tank for today. It's been really hot. It's supposed to kind of hopefully cool off a little bit, but I was hoping this wasn't so bad and had it not been that bad and I could have just cut it in, I literally probably could have done both sides. But because it threw me a curveball, stuff behind it was rotten. You start freewheeling and figuring how to, you know, fix things and then you're making patch panels. And that's kind of how sheet metal work goes. I mean, I went into this video thinking, Oh, I'll just show people how to cut a panel in. Well, it's just not that straightforward, unfortunately. And that's why when you take these places, you take a car that's rotten, and you're like, hey, how much to fix this? How much to put this piece in? Half the time, just like on this car, I didn't even do the rear structure. Had we done the rear structure, I would have had to make all of that stuff, fit the front panel to that, and then cut the front panel in, and then attach both those together. So this is like a half-assed race car version of what you're really supposed to do but it gives me the look from the outside. Um, where we welded it, I did not take a bunch of time to do it, so it did suck in a little bit, but I'm okay with it. We're just gonna wipe some filler on it. We gotta go around the wheel well and all that, so the bottom section of this will get fill work. Uh, nothing like what was on that other piece, um, but enough to make the little stitch scars or whatever go away. And then uh, I'm happy with the little corner panel piece that we just welded in. It's much better, at least there's something there to stick a little bit of filler to and put some color on. And I'm good, so at least this corner of the car uh, pretty well got wrapped up, and I think this is the worst side, um, hopefully. So this week, at some point, we'll get around, I'll do all the other side, hopefully open that other corner and see how we go. And then the only thing left is that door, as long as it treats me kind of decent, we should be pretty well stripped and just get around the edges and things like that. And then finally, we can start kind of looking at getting this thing ready, throw some primer on possibly, and then hopefully getting ready for paint um, after that. So that is it. You guys know what to do. I'm tired. I'm going to clean up. Like, subscribe, share, leave questions, comments, concerns. Again, this isn't like the be-all, end-all way to do this. This is just the way to do it. If you're building kind of a race car, kind of crappy car, maybe you want to DIY the thing. If you were a DIY guy and you put a patch in, even if it took you all day, it looked like this, you'd probably be pretty excited um, because it, it looks easy but it takes a bit of practice. So yeah, that's it. That's all I got for you guys. Till next time, I'm out. <laughs>